Hello, my name is Chris Smith, and in this video, I will show you how to really quickly prototype a software idea. So if you're like me, you've probably come across lots of little ideas day to day as you're going about your daily life, if you're using some software service, or you're just seeing problems that exist. And one thing that really keeps me from building those out is that uh, it's hard to take the time to just sit down and build it. And so in this video, I'm going to talk about uh, a tool that you can use to really quickly prototype these ideas. So let's check it out. So usually you have some problem or a challenge that you're facing and you want to build a prototype for it. And you really want to do that as quick as possible so you can get it in front of your users and start learning if it actually solves the problem and what more might be needed. And so uh, let's just zoom out a sec. And a typical application has three main components, some sort of data and service component where your data lives. This could be databases or APIs, some sort of intermediate transformational logic. This might be moving data around, transforming it, doing it all headlessly without user interaction, as well as a user interface. So this could be front-end frameworks like React or Angular. In this case, we're going to be looking at Retool um, because I think it's really well suited for building a quick prototype and just quickly getting uh, an app out the door and in use and in testing. And so this is what we're looking at. And some of the things you typically need in an app is hosting and version control, SDKs and database interfaces, front end data binding and routing, as well as finding different UI packages for charts, tables, etc. And uh, why we're using Retool in this is because all of these things are pre built and you can really just compose them together. So for UI libraries, Retool has a bunch of pre built UI components which you can drag and drop onto a blank canvas and start using immediately. There's also a ton of pre-built database uh, connectors and APIs, which let you uh, get data in and out of those tools really quickly. And when you do this, you can set up different queries, uh, which can be interfacing with those different systems to really quickly pull that data into your front end. And there's also helpful tools for viewing the schema and, and structure of the data you're working with. And thirdly, Retool has this pre-built data binding built in. So all of your components, all of your queries automatically get broken out into variables with all of their properties and specific methods under them. So you can quickly see how all of these things interconnect and write scripts when needed, only when needed, to uh, add custom functionality. And finally, that's all hosted on the cloud and it has version control. So if someone makes a mistake, you can always go back in and revert that change if need be. And so what we're going to look at today is a really quick example of how you can combine these different components and queries to build a simple application. And my goal is to help you understand how you can do this for any type of application. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to grab data from a REST API, we're going to pull it into a table, populate that table, so that when each of these uh, table rows is selected, it'll automatically dynamically generate an email, which we can then send to mom. So she has all of the great cat facts. And this will be posting out to uh, Gmail over SMTP. And just to zoom out a little bit further so that we're speaking at the right level, uh, this app could be built on top of Postgres, MySQL, Firebase, Google Sheets, any of these different connectors. And the same thing, instead of using Gmail, we might send out a message on SendGrid or Twilio or update an opportunity in Salesforce. Um, so in that same way, once these components are really easy to drag and drop and to connect to data, you can really simply and easily um, compose different applications for any type of um, app that you want to prototype. So let's dive in and see how I built this little cat fact distributor app. And let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. So jumping into the app, we can see here that I can uh, select different rows. I can choose to send that and we'll see a little email sent item. And if I go to my Gmail, I'll see an example of that email coming in. And Retool is composed of three main sections, the left-hand panel, the bottom panel, and the right-hand panel. And these let us add our UI components, create those queries, and see how everything is connected together. 
And if you're wanting to follow along, you can just go to retool.com, click try for free, and that will take you to an interface where you can go in and create a new app. So if we're going to build this app from scratch, we could just say my cat app. And this will take us to a blank canvas where we can quickly go ahead and start adding in our components. So we'll add in a table and let's drop in a, some header text and we'll use markdown to format that and say my cat facts app. And now we have our table and you can see that as you can quickly drag and drop these you could prototype just about anything and this table um, just has some mock data in JSON, so you could even mock up the data without having your data source set up yet. And next we're going to add in a container, and this will be our email section. We'll set this to a fixed size. And let's go ahead and drag in an image. Oh, that's a dog. Let's see if we can get another one. Okay, so let's grab our cat URL from here. And in our email area, we're going to want a button that will allow us to send this email. And within the email, we're going to call this the cat mailer. And we're going to insert a text field so that we can show our um, cat fact once we populate that. And we're also going to add in a text input area for the body of our email, as well as a subject line text input. Okay, so now we're starting to get a sense of the scaffold of this app. And you can see that we've got a button, we've got a table here, we can click around the different rows, we can add values to this email, and this is all super loosely structured, but it allows us to start to really get those thoughts out of our head and onto the screen. So let's um, pull in the data from our CatFax API. So the way we're going to do this is open the bottom panel. And in the bottom panel, we can see that we have a default query here. And so what I'm going to do is pull in some data from my CatFax REST API. If you don't have that API set up, you can go and create a new resource connect it to a REST API, and then add in your credentials, and you'll be off to the races. So from here, I have a simple get operation getting the data from this CatFax REST API. So if I preview this, I can see some data comes in, so it looks like it's working. So let's just save and run it, and we'll call this our get CatFax. And now I want to link this data to my table. So my table here, I'll select that, open up the right-hand panel, and instead of having all of this data, I'm going to choose to reference in curly braces here, so you can see that braces. This will populate the valid options across the app that it already sees. And we know that we already have this get cat facts query, so if I select that, we can see that it turns green and shows me the data that's available and now the table is populated with that data. And we really don't need all of this data, so I'm going to go ahead and hide all of the items except for the text field. Okay, and now we have a table with all of our cat facts coming in from the REST API endpoint. And next what we want to do is grab the selected row value from this table and populate that into this emailer. And so if we open up the left-hand panel, we can see that our table has a set of selected rows which we can go in and see the data value for that row. So what we want to do is reference this selected row in our subject line, our body, and our um, initial fact value. So let's do that. So we will select uh, initially just our header here and we'll say this is a fact and we'll reference the table one selected row dot on um, dot text and so now we can see that this dynamically updates as we move around and for our subject we want to say um, hey mom 
check this out. And for our body, we're going to add in some text and I'm just going to copy it over from um, the finished app here. But instead of pulling in the fact statically like this, we're going to reference that same table one selected row dot text. And we can see that as I click around now, the body of the email updates. And so we need a little bit more space here. So let's give this room. Okay, great. And so now we have this button and we want to set it up to where it'll grab the subject and body for this and send that in an email. So let's change the name initially to send to mom. And now we need to bring in our query. So let's just create a new resource query and we will now reference our Gmail connector. And, and this is the same way that you would set up your um, other REST API. You would just go and create a new resource and plug in your Gmail credentials. You might also have to enable some special settings in Gmail to enable this. And so I'm just gonna plug in an email address here as well as a send email. So this would be my mom's email, but I'm just gonna put my personal email in. And for the subject, I'm going to reference this text input one, which I'm just gonna change the name to subject and I'll change the body to body. So now I can quickly reference those here by selecting the subject dot value as well as the body dot value. And we can see both of those are populating. So let's just save this and we will name it um, send email. And when an email is sent, we want to set up a success message to notify the user that says email sent. Okay, perfect. So now let's connect our button to that query. And so to do that, you select the button and go to the event handlers and add a trigger query event handler so that when the button's clicked, it will trigger this query and specifically the one that's sending an email. Okay, so now we can test this out and we see that an email was sent. Okay, so now the app is more or less done. Some final things to point out is you probably want to do some styling on this, changing some values for, say, header backgrounds, um, or even applying your own custom CSS. You can also pull in different JavaScript libraries if you prefer those, as well as build custom components purely out of HTML, JavaScript, or traditional React code. And finally, you can also share this app and set it to be public if you wanted other people to be able to view it. And that will give you a public link which you can then go and share with anyone you like. So that really wraps up the app. I hope that this communicates how you can quickly compose these different components into any myriad number of ways to prototype an app, to quickly get an app up and running so you can test it, you can solve your problems really quickly. So I hope this helps. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below and thanks for watching.